Bismillah wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah wa salam This video I have the purpose to respond to some question about the the ruqiyah and how to cure evil eyes how to make a self ruqiyah to ourselves and our families and other people spread this message it can be useful for other people the first question is how to make the self ruqiyah it is told that it is best to teach a poor man fishing than to give him a fish the first thing will be the intention you will focus your intention on the part of the body that you want to cure or the part of the body of who you want to cure if you feel the pain in a particular place on your body if not you put a general intention if the pain is in your head or in your a stomach so you will focus your intention to that place that my recitation will go to that place to cure it and if you can you put your hands because an nabi sallam used to teach us to put our hand on the place that we feel the pain and the recitation that you will have will go throughout your hand to cure the painful place in the hadith it is said that if you feel a pain in any place of your body, put your hand on it and say three times, Bismillah, Bismillah, Bismillah. And you will say seven times, A'udhu billahi wa qudratihi min sharri ma ajidu wa uhaviru. At least seven times. And if you want to make a more complete ruqya, you will put in your in front of you uh, some bottles of water or of uh, oil like olive oil or um, habat soda oil and any type of uh, liquid that you want to recite on it after that you will eat it or use it on your body because it is proved that the liquids have uh, a re reaction to what is recited close to them there is a Asiatic teacher, his name is Emoto, and he has made a lot of experiences about the reaction of the water to what is recited nearby. And using water is also in the Sunnah of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It was said that if a person touch another person with uh, evil eyes, he should wash himself with water and make this water through out through his body and give this water to the one who have filled the evil eyes and he should wash himself with it in order to cure himself in the time of nabi sallam there was a sahabi who have looked one other that have a beautiful body and after that he become sick so they bring him to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tell them that the one who have look at him with evil eyes tell him to wash himself and take this water and wash your uh, brother with it so he will feel better. So we will open those bottle and we will blow inside it. So the connection between us and our recit recitation and the bottle will be more strong. And we will start by reciting Al-Fatiha with Bismillah rahman rahim Because Bismillah rahman rahim is one ayah from the seven ayah of Al-Fatiha. Sahabi told the Nabi Sallallahu that he have make a ruqya with Al-Fatiha. And the Nabi Sallallahu was so amazed that how do you understand and how do you find that uh, ruqya is useful with Al-Fatiha. So this Sahabi make his own ishtihad to understand and to find and the Nabi Sallallahu was so pleased about that. So we will recite it 11 times. Why 11 times? We can find this in the hadith of Nabi Sallallahu when some magic have been done to him. So they find the magic and take it out from the wheel and they recite on that rope uh, 11 time because there was on the rope nod so after each recitation of a nod was untying so maybe if there were more than 
11 نود النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم will have recited more than 11 time but so we can stay with this number or recite more no problem it is the Quran so we said Fatiha 11 time and after that Ayat Al-Kursi 11 time and Nabi صلى الله عليه used to say that Ayat Al-Kursi A'adham Ayat in Fil Quran that is the more greatest Ayah in the Quran and after that Kul Huwa Allah Ahad and Nabi صلى الله عليه used to say that Innaha Ta'adilu Thuluth Al-Quran that Kul Huwa Allah Ahad is equivalent to one third of the Quran so we will recite Ayat Al-Kursi 11 time, كل الله أحد 11 time, and كل عضو بفلق رزق بالناس 11 time uh, each one of them, and and Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم used to make prayer before the revelation of كل عضو بفلق رزق بالناس in order to ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to preserve him and his family about evil and uh, the jinn and all those things. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the revelation of Kul Aadhu Fala Quraza bin Nas, he started to use them and left all what he was doing like uh, dua. When we recite Al-Fatiha, we don't need to say Amin in the end. And we would recite with uh, uh, loudly voice. Not so loudly, but uh, a voice that can be heard. It is said that the one who recites Ayat al Kursi in the morning, no jinn and uh, uh, shayateen can come close to him until the evening. And if he recites it in the evening, no shaitan can come close to him until the morning. And we can add other ayah of the Quran to this recitation and this colonization of the water and of, of the liquids. Like uh, the verse in Surah Yunus, the verse 81. ما جئتم به السحر إن الله سيبطلوا 11 time and also سورة الأعراف the verse 117 to the verse 121 وأوحينا إلى موسى نلقي عصاك فإذا هي تلقف ما يأفكون فوقع الحق وبطل ما كانوا يعملون فغلبوا هنالك وانقلبوا صاغرين وألقي السحرة الساجدين قالوا آمنا برب العالمين رب موسى وهارون you can stop at the verse 121 or you can add 122 with it. We can add also some verse from Surah Taha, Surah 20, from the verse 68 to 70. <laughs> وألق ما في يمينك تلقف ما صنعوا إنما صنعوا كيد ساحر ولا يفلح الساحر حيث أتى فألقي السحرة سجدا قالوا آمنا برب هارون وموسى And as we have said before the Sahbi make his own ishtihad to find ayah and surat to make ruqya with it. So it's possible for each one of us to look in the Quran which verses concerning the problem that he have and to recite it in order to seek from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his help. For example, if one woman have some trouble with her husband or the husband have some trouble with a uh, woman and they are feeling that something is not going uh, well, they can use this verse of Surat Baqarah. يعلمون الناس السحر وما أنزل على الملكين ببابيل هاروت وماروت وما يعلمان من أحد حتى يقولا إنما نحن فتنة فلا تكفر 
فيتعلمون منهما ما يفرقون به بين المرء وزوجه وما هم بضارين به من أحد إلا بإذن الله So when we will finish the recitation we will blow another time on the liquids and blowing is coming in a lot of hadith that the Nabi Islam used to blow in his hand before reciting the verse of protection before sleeping a blow on the sick people and recite this and that and after that you should close those bottles and not let them open if not the recitation can come out from it and we will use some of those liquid to take bath with it and order to use it like oil or like a cream for our body as the quran is uh, pure and sacred one should when he take the bath with the water that he have recited the quran in it he should take it in a container so when the water will drop it will fill on the container he will take this water and after that throw it in the ground or in the garden or in the plant or you can also wash your car with it so if uh, evil eyes have linked to your car you can make them go with it you should pay attention that it will not go to the sanity so uh, for respecting the Quran and also because some jinn live there and the water can burn them without being maniac you should just pay attention you will drink and wash yourself and also if you find some magic or some things uh, you are suspecting to be magic in your car in your house so you will uh, throw this water on it you can wash your children and uh, uh, also prepare some food or some uh, tea for the one that you are thinking that he have some magic but he don't want to cure himself and you will use this water and those liquids until you will feel uh, amelioration in your uh, aspect and in your feelings and when you start to feel better you can make more space on using this water maybe instead of using it every day you will use it every two three days and when you feel a lot of this bad feeling uh, you can wash yourself with this water even three times a day with one liter after uh, making this if you still feel uh, badness so you should ask for a professional of ruqya in order to help you on those things that you are feeling I will put in the description of this video and in the commentary a mail address that can be useful for those who need this assistance. The second question is how can I know that I need or not this uh, Rukia? So uh, the first aspect is when you see in your life that some problems are uh, coming and coming again that for example every time that you want to get married uh, everything would be okay and in the end it will stop and this have happened to you several times when uh, for the job uh, for no reason they will uh, uh, not call you back and sometimes they will say okay everything is okay and in the end it will not be able to success or they will uh, just throw you out from the job every time and every time or when also you administrative task that you have some paper to get and instead of taking one month it will take five months for you to get them and also on your body when you go to the doctors and they don't see anything and you are feeling the pain you are feeling uh, some badness in yourself but the medical uh, equipment cannot find anything and spiritually when you feel sadness and a lot of west west things talking in your head and when you make so bad dreams when you have so many difficulty to pray or when you are praying you hear in your head someone uh, insulting uh, islam or insulting allah you feel something in you around you so in this type of case you will make rukia for yourself or you will try to get in touch with a professional the third question is what to do when i find a magic 
so a lot of people used to throw it and to throw it in the dustbin or in the toilet or to pee on it but the best thing is to firstly take it when you are reciting quran so you can protect yourself and to open it because mostly it will be in a paper with scotch or in leather so you will open it while you are reciting the quran and you will put it in the uh, quran water that uh, you have made and you will leave it at least for 30 minutes and if not you can leave it all the night and after that you will take it out make it dry and you will burn it and uh, if there is some things remaining about this magic you will put it on the ground just buried it don't just throw it because the magic will still remain active and it will still send to you the bad effect of it so you should uh, destroy it as we have said the fourth question is is the woman or the man can do ruqya to each other or to their children and even to your animals and nabi sallam said that evil eyes can bring a camel to the pot and a man to his grave in five what is the things that bring a person to be uh, touched by the gene and this illness the bad behavior if someone have a lot of anger and have the habit to lie and other bad behavior this will bring more easily to him the gene because they will feel that uh, this man or this woman look like us or are badder than us. One time a jinn said that how can I come out from this body? He is more evil than me. And also the fornication. The one who practice fornication, man or woman who used to have this uh, type of behavior without getting married. The jinn and the magic will uh, touch them more easily. I remember one testimony of a guy who said that he knows that the jinn used to come and take benefit from uh, this type of entertainment. So he wanted to make some wiqaya and recite some Quran verse and before making this scene. When he started to recite, the person in front of him that he wanted to make this scene with it started to shout because the jinn or the, the shaitan was ready in that time to make the sin with him so it was not expecting that this guy will recite the quran and nabi sallam used to said that when a man or woman married wanted to link to each other they should make the dua bismillah allahumma jannibna ash shaitan wa jannib ash shaitan ma razaqtana seeking refuge from shaitan so this is when they are married so how come if they are not married that shaitan will leave them and not come to this interaction and after that those who commit the big sins like shirk and uh, stealing and other things that like that a man went with his child to make ruqya this man was holding a lot of tahweed on him and when the ruqya started he felt a very huge pain he had to leave the place because those uh, tahweed have a lot of shayateen with them those who take benefit from uh, jinn they will feel and they will be attacked by those jinn Allah SWT said in the Quran that those who go to them they will increase all his problems وَإِنَّهُ كَانَ رِجَالٌ مِّنَ الْإِنسِ يَعُوذُونَ بِرِجَالٍ مِّنَ الْجِنِّ فَزَادُوهُمْ رَهَقًا Those who smoke and drink alcohol, there will be a door which will open between the jinn and the world of the jinn and the world of this man. The jinn will enter in his body and after that he will be every time giving him incitation to drink and to smoke drugs 
he arrived a lot of time that this gene will attack this man so he will stay between our world and the world of the gene he will not uh, be full in control of his mind sometimes he will be with you and sometimes he will be in their world and also they will not leave him every time they will be uh, pushing him to come back to these uh, drinks they will gather around him and they will surround him sometimes you will feel bad only by staying nearby him those who eat haram things and take benefit from usurer interest a door will be open between them and the jinn and they will be able to attack them more easily Allah SWT said in the Quran that those who take benefit from uh, interest the jinn will touch them الذين يأكلون الربا لا يقومون إلا كما يقوم الذي يتخبط الشيطان من المس. And the women or men who uh, wear tiny clothes, a lot of time women or men in the ruqya they will see eyes looking at them. A lot of eyes. Those eyes come to them through the type of uh, clothes that they are wearing because even the jinn they will look with evil eyes and become in love with that man or that woman those who don't pray or neglect their namaz their prayer they will be more touched than the one who pray for example there will be uh, those who pray touch 30 percent and the one who don't have any protection any prayer they will be touched 100 percent the sixth question is how to recognize a uh, bad rocky or the one who are tr working with the jinn. So usually they will ask you the name of your mother because the jinn used to make the contrary of what is in the sunnah. If sunnah said eat with the right hand, they will eat with the left hand. So in sunnah you will call a person with the name of his father, but they will call the person with the name of his mother. So that man will ask you what is the name of your mother so he can look if you are in link, link with any gene or if there is any pact between you and uh, uh, the gene. So his gene will tell to your gene that you should leave this person for six months. So he will believe in us and he will give us uh, all what we are asking. And after six months, you can start back your job. So they will not stop to come and come and come. When he asks you personal belongings, bring me a clothes that you have wear. Bring me the clothes of your husband. So this is also people who are working with the gene. And also when he also when he claimed that you have to sacrifice something, a goat or anything, mostly the jinn are the ones who are asking for that. If someone say you should make sadaqa because the Nabi Sassam said that with the sadaqa Allah SWT will cure the disease, this is no problem. But if he said you have to make a sacrifice, this is suspect, so you shall uh, go away. When he also reclaimed that you have to pay him in gold or paying him in silver, bring your your golds. So mostly those people working with the jinn and also those who make ta'wid because when we open most of this ta'wid, they were inside it name of jinn, uh, Aiden. So you should pay attention to that. The last question is how to protect himself from uh, jinn and all this and how to get some uh, benefit from the Quran and from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is a lot of uh, Muslim who don't believe in jinn and bad eyes and uh, evil eyes and magic. They think that okay you, have make, you are making namaz, salat is uh, uh, sufficient. But if they read the Quran they will see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, give us a lot of time the motion to make tasbih. Uh, and we qayat protection in the morning after sub or before sub and after asr the one who don't make those protection have a big leak in is uh, link to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the protection that you will make before or after subh 
will remain active until the Asr time. And uh, if you don't renew it, you will have a gap that can use shaitan or anything to come. And so you have to renew it after Asr. And it will be effective and active until the Subh, the, the time of the morning prayer. The Quran فاصبر على ما يقولون وسبح بحمد ربك قبل طلوع الشمس وقبل غروبها ومن آناء الليل فسبح وأطراف النهار لعلك ترضى. For example, the Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم said that the one who will say three times in the morning and three times in the evening the أشي in Arabic mean after عصر. This dua will be protected from any evil in his uh, nafs and in his family and wealth. Bismillah, alladhi la yadurru ma'asmihi shay'un fil ardi wala fi samai wa huwa sami'ul alim. So, Uthman ibn Affan Radranu is the one who report this hadith and one day he forget to say this hadith and his son become sick and his son was looking to his father like he, he was asking him oh my father what happened and the father say oh forgive me i have uh, forget to say the dua in this morning and also for those those who have debt and uh, uh, lack in money so and nabi sallam told one sahabi how to make dua against that. He said, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-hazani wa a'udhu bika min al-ajzi wal-kasali wa a'udhu bika min al-jubni wal-bukhl wa a'udhu bika min ghalabati al-dayn wa qahri al-rijal. This is one of the version of the hadith. And that sahabi said that in less than one week, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala solved all my debt and all my problem. So we should learn those protection and recite them every day and every night to be protected. And as we have said also, the first generation of Muslim used to uh, search in the Quran, the ayah, which will bring them some favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn al-Qayyim al-Jawzi used to say that I have searched in the Quran and I have found that the one who use Surah Al-Fatiha will find so many benefits that he will not need anything else. And other pious people also have find benefit from the Quran. So by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, some of those experience and those uh, ayah uh, have been gathered in the book Hadaika Dhahta Bahja. You will find the link to this book uh, in the mail address that will be in the description and in the commentary. And to finish, and the most important is that to get benefit from any ayah, any hadith, any dua, you need to have strong yaqeen, strong belief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said every time the truth, and, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa also said the truth. So this thing that I am using, He will work, no doubt about this. This yaqeen, this uh, belief is the power that will make you benefit from the Quran and the Hadith. We have to do it certainly. So if you have other questions about Aruqiyan, about this <coughs> subject, you can put it in commentary. We will maybe gather them and make another video. May Allah be with us and with our family and with the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhan rabbik rabbil izzat ya masifun wa salamun ala al-mursalin. Walhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And spread the message.